Scripturants. Today I want to go through a video with you that I've been wanting to film for a couple of weeks now as I've been waiting for stuff to come in. I finally have all of the copies of the cover that I need to make, oop, drop my glasses, my cover decision of whether or not I want to do matte or glossy. And I will do close-ups of everything and try to go through all of my thoughts. So if you've been following me, you know that there's been a couple different copies of the book that I've had over the last couple months. So I started off with this massive copy. This was a copy specifically for editing the story and the grammar and things, and this is actually book one and book two bound up into a big thing. I had a matte cover, it was just a picture that I found on Pinterest. So just a random picture with my name and the title, and it says proof copy on the back because I didn't want to put the description because I didn't have a description at that point. Um, and then the spine was just, everything's backwards. Um, my name and the title again. Um, then when I really started to work on formatting, I was still working on some editing things from betas, I went to this cover. And this was just a glossy cover this time to see how it looked in the actual size that the book was going to be and in glossy to see how the black would print because obviously there wasn't really any black on that one. And I knew that black was going to be a large portion of this cover. Um, so again, we went with glossy, it's got the ISBN on the back, it just says proof copy, it's got stickies, and this was just a basic create space template. Um, it was just something that I threw together, it was just like, there's water, let's have a picture of water, but it doesn't have really anything else besides that. That is really what I wanted. Um, it doesn't have the color scheme that I wanted or anything like that. Um, now, if you've watched my cover reveal video, you know that when I went to my designer, um, I didn't really have a full concept in mind. I had an idea of an image that I wanted, but nothing really set in stone, and she was able to create my cover for me. Um, when I did the reveal, I didn't have physical copies. I now have physical copies that I can show you. So. I just did like a picture there, but now I have physical copies that I can show you in both the glossy and the matte. And I will do close-ups of these to really show you in depth what they look like. Um, but I have the two different color, not covers, copies, one in the glossy and one in the matte, and I need your help to make the decision. I've already put polls up on my Instagram stories, which will be done by the time we finish, but I might do another one just to test. Um, there's one up on my Facebook page, and there's also one on my Twitter. And the, I don't remember how long the one for Facebook is, but the one for Twitter is for six days, seven days. So that one will still be up. You can always comment on which one you think. But I'm going to go through the things that I learned doing the cover design and what I think of what I have so far and what things I want to have changed. So the first thing, which was something that we decided, Jane and I, when we did this test was the size. I knew I wanted to have it be an easy in hand size because it is a paperback. I'm not going to be doing hardcover right away. Um, so we decided, I decided to go by with the five by eight. Um, this size is the five and a half by eight and a half. And as you can see, it's just a little bit bigger on all sides. But how bulky it was at this point and things, it was perfect for editing, but for actual reading, I preferred this size. Um, the spine is about half an inch. It's gonna change a little bit as I add stuff because I am doing a preview of book two in the back of book one. So make sure you keep reading when you get to the end or just pre-order it and be ready for it. Um, I don't have a pre-order for book two. I don't know what I'm saying that. <laughs> I mean pre-order for book one. Um, so the sizing we knew pretty much down pad. Um, so really the things that have been, the things that we've still are tossing around, like this is the 
final concept. There's just a few things with in the design that we want to tweak. It's not like I'm going to be releasing a brand new cover tomorrow. Um, and the actual finish of the cover is something that I want to spend a lot of time on because it, I am really pushing the physical product. I want people to be able to hold the book in their hand. And so I want it to be a product that feels good in your hand while you're using it. Um, I did go for the inside. It is going to be white pages versus cream. I just, it's easier that way. Um, but yeah, so when I approached Jane, she is a graphic designer. She's also my roommate, which made it really easy. Um, I do have to owe her stuff. I didn't have her do it for free. We were going to do some photo stuff together because I am a part-time photographer as well. Um, so look for uh, graphic designers or book cover designers that are in your range. Um, Jane did not go to school for cover design, but she did go to school to design signs and marketing things, so she felt comfortable enough to do the cover. And when we sat down, she asked me if I had like color ideas in mind and if there was things that I knew I wanted. And so I said things like a strong but elegant script for the title and for my name. And the idea that I had for a picture, which is directly derived from a scene. Um, from my research, if you look at a lot of YA books, there's usually a person on the cover. It's just something we're drawn to is seeing a person on the cover. So we wanted to make sure that there was a person on the cover and that it represented the main character well. Um, the first few designs that came through, there was things we needed to tweak, like my main character Shauna is the one that is pictured on the cover of the map version. Um, and she is blonde, but because she's underwater, her hair was going to be a little bit darker. But when we originally did it, Shauna had more auburn hair. And as you can see, that's what I meant by a strong but elegant script. Um, so that was kind of the idea that we were looking for. Um, as you can see, this is what I meant by a strong but elegant script. It You can clearly see what it says, but it's still elegant. Um, and like with the details with Shauna, her hair had to be more of a blonde color and we tweaked with the color of her dress a little bit and the bubbles around her feet and her face and whether or not she should have bubbles there because she is a waterbender in a sense. She's a the water ritual. So she is able to control water so and breathe underwater which these are none of these are spoilers you find them out in the first chapter um and it's on the back of the book <laughs> so would she have the bubbles around her face and details like that and then there's all the details in the trees and things like that that i'm looking at now in the two different versions and i want them to be more distinct um but when we first talked we were trying to figure it out and if you follow me on instagram you'll see some of those first design concepts that I gave to Jane and um, one of the sketches that she originally had done and they were all about the same idea. A few things changed as the project progressed but overall the idea was the initial scene that I had and we just added things. Um, so what are some things that I would suggest? No a general idea. Um, a lot of good designers, if you just give them a few keywords, are able to create something, but they can't create something out of nothing. So do try to make sure that you have something that they can use. Um, I was on Pinterest a lot looking at different colors, looking at color schemes and themes and images to create something. Um, I just posted a picture on my Instagram of a inspiration board for book two. Um, which that could be something that you could use is that idea. I do have an idea for book two. I'm not going to tell you yet. Um, haven't even told Jane yet, so you don't get to know. Um, but just making like an inspiration board and then giving it to your designer would be a really good tip. Um, make sure you have all of the 
things that you would need on the cover. So do you have any social media handles? What are those? Make sure they're spelled correctly. Make sure that like, for me, my Facebook and my Instagram are the same, but my Twitter is not because someone stole my name. <laughs> so make sure that you have that information to give them. If you have an ISBN, get the barcode if you can to give to them. Um, the synopsis is a really big thing. They can't fully figure out the design and all the details of it if they don't have all of that. Or you don't have a pen name. Do you know what your pen name is? Things like that. Um, and just get it all in a file to give to your designer. And don't expect them to get it done in two days. They are creating a piece of art. Just like you created a story, they are creating a piece of art. Uh, make sure you give them credit where credit is due. I will be crediting Jane in my acknowledgments um, because she is special like that and I want to make sure people know. And I'm pimping her here and I'm pimping her on my blog and on my Instagram constantly. So make sure you give credit where credit is due. Um, so some of the things that Jane and I know we need to change. Um, With my name, I know I wanted to make my name a bit clearer, a bit brighter, because you can't see it as well as I would like. We'll do some close-ups now. Um, so my name isn't nearly as clear as I would like it to be, and so are some of the details behind Shauna. Um, they could just be a lot clearer. Like, you can't really see all the details of... These trees that are behind her unless you're really close um, on the back I want to just make this a bit of a brighter blue again that's just the same blue as that um, so things like that but overall I really like the mat um, I really like the finish of it it feels very nice in my hand but I do wish it was more vibrant in comparison to this one as you can see like they're clearly the same but the sh the glossy is a lot more vibrant. Um, I, I just got the matte today, and there's already some fingerprints all over it, so that is one downside. But, like, this one has got gunk all over it where it's been picked up. Um, so the name is a bit clearer up here on camera, but in person it's still kind of dark. But these details are just a lot more sharp and vibrant and clear because of that clear coating that's over it to make it glossy. Um, I do prefer the matte script. It does look more embossed than on the glossy. And on the back, you just, a lot of the details that are back here, like these, you really can't see it at all. There you go. Those are all bubbles back there. But... You can't really see it on the mat at all. So those are just things like that we want to improve for the final design that we know we want to improve. So I will be getting another round of proofs. Um, but I don't know what I want more. <laughs> I do really like the mat. Um, when I last checked the polls, Instagram had more matte than glossy, but Facebook has more glossy than matte. Twitter, nobody's voted yet as of this moment. Um, so make sure you go and submit your vote because that feedback is going to be really helpful for me to make that final decision because while it is a product for me, it is also a product for you. So... Go cast your vote. I'll probably do a poll somewhere over here because that's usually where they put the card. So I'll put a poll here as well to see what do you as a viewer think. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. We're getting even closer. Oh, I just can't believe it. I've got these two versions. Um, and I'm so excited. We're getting closer. We're less than two months now. So... Make sure you're following me on all of the social media. We've got them right here. We can pimp them. At the scripture and ting. Ooh, finger. At the scripture and ting on Twitter and author Caitlin Costello on both Facebook and Instagram. 
um, obviously you're on my YouTube, so subscribe and hit the little bell that's down there so that you know when I post. <sighs> what else? My mailing list is still open all the time. There's still two eARCs you can win, one for August and one that will be announced on publication day. I have a Patreon, so if you want to support me that way, you can support me for as little as a dollar a month. And that's almost an ebook a month, so that would be great. Um, until this Sunday, my birthday, at midnight, the print editions that will be signed by me in this little space right here will still be $10.99. Now, on Amazon, they are $10.99, so you're actually getting a cheaper version off of my website, which is www.caitlincostello.com, and then you go to the Buy Books tab at the top, and then you can get a signed edition for $10.90, and that's only through Sunday. After that, that goes the signed editions go back up to $13.99. On Amazon, the copies for the print editions are $10.99 and $2.99 for the eBooks. Um, if you do order a pre-signed edition, those will come in a bit later because I have to order them to me and then sign them and then send them to you. <sighs> I think that's everything. This is going to be really long, and I'm sorry that the outro is so randomly. And little Athena is over here napping, so we'll let her say goodbye. She went to the vet today, and she's not feeling too good. She's a sleepy kitty, but we can't have a video without Athena, so... I love you all. Athena says, bye.